He got a point in the board, but he wants one that feels like he earned it. What better way to do so than a Malian mirror on Dry Arabia? Certainly, KB. As you said, he took the game on Warring Islands, but that's a fairly unconventional tournament map. For him to gain momentum in this series and for him to believe in the possibility of upsetting Dimu, it has to be a win on a classic tournament map like Dry Arabia or like Regions in the future. This one is a Mali and Mirror, though. Tough one to break here. So many small differences can make the mile on these mirrors. Let's see what Corvinus has on his mind. For now, he's rushing up Feudal Age with 9 veils compared to Dimu 7. Dimu on the other side prioritizing the eco upgrades. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just to kind of recap the, the pregame here, right? This matchup is a big one, in my opinion. Dumu, top player, honestly. Like, I think I said top three in the pregame, and I stand by that. This guy has been phenomenal on the Marlins. He's also playing some of his best Age of Empires, as we saw in the Call to Arms tournament. But Corvinus is an experimenter. And although we may talk about this being a Marlin mirror, and it's hard to get a leg up on your opponent so easily with some cheesy or unexpected builds, we also have to remember that we are in Empire Wars territory. Players have not had enough time to test every permutation in every matchup. So there's a big chance that some sloppy but effective builds could slip through. Looks like a stable opening for Corvinus on the other side. Demo is going heavy on the eco upgrades, opens with the barracks. He's going to play a defensive game over here against the... Either Warrior Scout or Sofa opening of War, most likely Warrior Scouts. But you feel like he isn't really going to invest much into Feudal Age combat here. It's going to be more about rushing that Castle Age, I feel. Yeah, I, I think, like, knowing Corvinus, he usually likes these kind of feigned aggressions into his own greed. So it's that type of player that I could see him just, like, building a few Sofas even early on, keeping his opponent distracted, and then trying to be greedy himself. But I think Dumu is aware of that as well. I don't think that's a, a secret strategy of Corvinus's. It's actually something I've witnessed multiple times in the last few days when he's playing civs like the Marlins. Hmm. And uh, I'm just looking at the spawns here, actually, in the gold. Like, Corvinus, the ridiculous part is, like, for all that greed he could plan, I don't think I've seen a game in which it's easier. That is the single most generous spawn I've ever seen from a Marlin player. Like, we had a game in the last tournament where I think it was Marine Lord got, like, all of his gold veins in a corner, and even that one didn't look this safe. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, some wars coming up here for Corvinus. Interesting. I, of course. I, it, look at it. Just look how defendable it is. Like, it, honestly, we need to get on the screen. The, the second and third gold vein, like, yeah. Literally saves resources on housing, they're so close. What the hell? Yeah, I I'm a little surprised about this approach taken by Corvinus here. He opened with a stable, not a single cavalry unit coming out. Now adding some Dunsos, but also walling himself off. I'm not exactly sure what his mindset is here, because right now I feel like that investment into the stable was kind of wasteful. Obviously, Demu is going to see it, and he's going to think about certain strategies that Corvinus might go for, so... There might be a bait element in here, but so far this stable investment didn't play didn't pay off for Corvinus. I, I think I like the idea behind it though. I just don't like the way he's playing it. And the idea behind it from Corvinus is that he gets the upgrade on his scout so he can actually beat the crap out of Dimus and then strip vision. So then you can be greedy if you want to and your opponent doesn't know. And there you go. Just dives onto him. Goes straight in for the trade, gets rid of one. Whoop! Okay, that felt like a bit of a miss micro. Corvinus, if he went to the left side, he could have stayed out of range of the Donzo. So instead, from a position where he should be able to clean up both scouts, he now finds himself the one on the run. Dumu will maintain that vision. Yeah, and uh, interestingly, Corvinus is the one who is closer to Castle Age here among the two players. Definitely yeah. a surprising thing to see, knowing that Dimu invested very little into production buildings, army at the beginning, and also knowing that Dimu already invested into a lot of these eco upgrades. I would have thought that those eco upgrades pay off a little quicker, but I guess here's the answer. He is building up the Cal ranches very yeah. quickly. You see, there's a clear-cut place for a Grand Fulani Coral to be placed at. And if you look at Corvinus, he is probably supposed to have less cattle than Dimu does. He definitely has less cattle. Uh, I think he's now building his fifth one right now. Meanwhile, Dimu is already six, close to seven, right? Yeah, so yeah. he's behind. And that's why he's got so much additional resources. So he's planning to tech up faster, but like Dimu... 
What this means is because he went in the cattle earlier, he should theoretically arrive in Castle Age maybe like 30 seconds later, but with a bigger bank to spend. Yeah, I like this more for Corvinus though. I feel like having that Castle Age advantage gives you more than just a buff from the Grand Felonic Corral. It also gives you the ability to go for mosques, to start popping out some monks, go for the relics. Um, yeah, so a lot of things beyond the Grand Felonic Corral that Corvinus could leverage. And in a game where Demus got basically no mobility for his army, if Corvinus can yoink a couple of relics initially, that could set him up well for the long run. So I actually prefer this a lot for Corvinus, especially because Demu is still far away from Castle Age over here. This is not going to be a 30-second deficit, KP. No, it, it's it's bigger, but in some ways it can be worthwhile because of what Demu is doing. The walls going up means he can come out of his base. And the problem with your idea of gathering relics, I liked it. Now it's hard. What did Corvinus lose in the last minute? Scouts. He doesn't yep. see anything on the map. Like, if you go into the temple right now, it, you feel like you're just burning gold. He does have a stable, though. He could make a new scout in pretty much no time. Instead, he's going heavy on the upgrades, now grabbing the eco upgrades that Demu has gotten already. But also, he's going imported armor, so Wait, we might what? see some sofas making an appearance soon. Is that... I'm pretty sure that's the Musafadi Warriors, right? Is like, it? That is a... We, the, the, it looks like the sign for the Musafadi. Maybe I'm wrong. I yeah. sometimes still get the, the Malians. Yeah, yeah some of these icons like... are very similar. Could be Musafadi Warriors, actually. No, uh, no, it must be Warrior Scouts, right? Yeah, it's got to be Warrior Scouts. He hasn't got a Rax. Wait, no, he has got a Rax. Yeah, it's Musafadi. Okay, I was right. Don't doubt myself is what I'm hearing here, folks. So the, the reason I am so, like brain farted by this choice is there are zero reasons in this game right now for him to build Musafadi Warriors. He saw his opponents walling himself in and he hasn't seen a single heavy unit. So if his goal was to take a good fight, it doesn't help him. If his goal was to raid, there are wolves in the way. You're not going to get in stealth. No, he's just going for something cheeky here, KP. We've seen this, I believe, from Lucifron in Call to Arms, where he just went full Musafadi Warrior spam. This is not a counter unit to anything that Demo's bringing out. This is by design a mass Musafadi play. And I don't know if that's going to work against the Dances and the Javelins, but it might. You see, neither of those units are great when it comes to dealing with the Musafadi Warriors. Oh, uh, Javelins have pretty good base damage, right? So, like, Archers would do a bit more damage, but they do all right. And then we have to remember Donzos have additional health and melee armor compared to normal spears. So, like, the only upside is the Musafadis are cheaper, right? Like... Yeah, I, 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 I'm not sure one, about one this. One-on-one, on one, like, I agree with you. I feel like here yeah. the story is about the flood of the Musafadi warriors. It's all about that for okay. um, Corvinus. But, but to your point of flooding, your opponent already has a much bigger army. So you kind of need Dumu to be greedy now, right? You need him to be going for the relics for this to feel like it's going to work. And it gets scouted out. Okay, that's... That's the boring detail for me now. So Dumu got critical information there. He saw Musafadi, he saw Sofa. He knows everything that's involved in Corvinus' comp right now. Yeah, that's a critical piece, as you said. Now he knows the Musafadi Warriors are coming, and he's walled in. So for him, it's all about playing a defensive game because, as you said, <laughs> his eco is functional. It's, it's a well-set-up eco. He's got more cattle to work with than Corvinus. He's grabbing additional eco upgrades compared to his opponent. So Little. if he can just play with these walls, slow this down and leverage the javelins from a distance, then Corvinus is going to struggle to break that defense. Look what he instantly done the moment he saw the Musafadi. He started queuing up his own and he's going archers. So Corvinus is going to add in the archers as well as you'd anticipate. But Dimu, like the issue with Corvinus's combo is he's trying to cover extra bases. And I feel like Dimu already has the, the baseline to count most of them, right? He's got Spearmen, he has got the Javelins, which are going to count your massing of archers now. And then he's just going to have this melee mosh pit to kind of match you out. So I think it's a worrying position for Corvinus. Um, relics are still being ignored by both sides. I don't think either player should necessarily be diving for those yet because I think the loss of production could lose you the fight. Yeah, Corvinus is going for poison arrows as well, but he only has a handful of archers. And Debo has a lot of javelin throwers as well. So you feel like even if Corvinus gets a bunch of those archers with the poison arrows upgrade in, it's not going to do much against the army that Demu has right now. Exactly. And and actually, to be honest, Corvinus really isn't adding to his mass. I, I don't know if this is a mismacker or intended, 
because he did start producing archers, right? But like, if you think about what he's doing with his economy right now, you can see it in the production tab. It's just Musafadi. Yeah, looks like... I, I just don't understand this for Corvinus, to be honest. He is grabbing one of the most expensive Malian techs, Poison Arrows, but then switching very heavily back into the Musafadi Warriors. He's getting some oh. good raids going over here, but I feel like... Oh! Corvinus I mean, is taking this fight the here. Yeah, well, like, I mean, Corvinus, it's a bad fight if you hang around. It was good if you could kill the cattle, and he does kill one of them, but the problem is, like, you need to kill two to three ranches for this to hurt. Because look what Dumu instantly does. He builds past it. He's got room around this. So Dumu a little bit slow to react there, but you know, you forgive it. It is going to be a bunch of mines coming in. They might be sneaking anywhere. Wouldn't be surprised if he puts an outpost down on the east side here to stop that in the future. Corvinus, I mean, if there wasn't a wall here, this would have been a great time. Are you kidding me? Oh, God. Yeah, just from the pathfinding, you could tell there was a hole out there. <laughs> Dimu has enough forces to repel this, though. Some scary yep. moments for him with those units sneaking past the walls, but looks like Corvinus is just going to go home with this. His Musafati numbers are increasing, but it's really not the flood that you still want, especially when you consider how big Dimu's army is. You know, that's one of those situations where legit... It almost feels like you should just walked away after you discovered there was a hole and just pretend it's not there, right? Like, oh, yeah, no, Dumu. He's, he's got impenetrable defenses. I can't get in. And then, like, a minute later, you just sneak in with an army because now that opportunity is gone, right? And now you're moving into the mid-map for a fight where I don't think you're favored here. Like, there's a lot of javelins. No. There's a lot of spears. I, I think the line of Dumu holds this. Flash coming in. Going for that concave, right? He's just trying to, like, let the, the booster party exhaust themselves as they go in for the clash. And now both sides will smash into each other. Archers on the backside do have those pots and arrows, but so many javelins carrying them out here. You can't help but feel Corvinus, he's struggling to kind of get enough troops out here fast enough. He also did send a group to raid, and that raider group, that just cost him the main fight. I'm not sure, KP. I think even with that raiding group, this would have been insufficient. He now is reduced to just archers against javelins. Musafati is doing a good job over here, providing some sort of a front line. Both sides taking massive casualties. But Dimu looks like he is going to clean this up here. He's going to clean up this raiding party back at home as well. And now Corvinus is repelled. And it's Corvinus, just like, it, he, he wasn't uh, macroing well either. Did you see that, Lidical? Like, he had almost 3,000 resources just sit, uh, sat there, distracted by the fight. Like, <sighs> it's, it's so difficult for Corvinus. The idea is great. We've seen the mass Musafati work, but it really needs to be a flood. And when your numbers are lower than your opponents and you're trying to spam Musafati, that's not going to work. Yeah, and also, like, that raid there, I mean, at first he targets the ranch, but then he stops and goes deeper. And the problem with that is, like, you're playing against Malians, man. It's, the new civs have the same proof between them both, right? Their economy, their, their ability to play the game isn't actually like other civs. It's not villages as much. Yes, that still adds a lot in. But with these ranches, with the cattle, with the pit mines, there's a lot of economy that comes elsewhere, which is why Dumu can kind of look at that fight, shrug, take the main one, and still feel confident on the other side. Mr. Fadi Stealthlin in. And again, top of the javelins here, so they start to reveal themselves. Second wave is coming in from Dumu. It's really important that Corvinus holds here. Now, the upside is most of these units were javelins, so it hasn't done any damage to his infrastructure, but new wave of javelins, plus spearmen coming in, and it's starting to look like there's just no front line for Corvinus. These Musafadi are just not tanking enough. Yeah, he's trying to play into the archers now with the poison arrows, but against an army that's almost exclusively javelins, that is just not working out. Now the archers will get cleaned up by the javelins, and it is Dimu who mixes in Musafadi warriors now. 52 army against 22, momentum on the side of Dimu, and he's very close to securing game number three here, you feel. Call an orange, an orange, call a spade a spade, and call this a stomping because Dumu, I mean, there is no comeback now for Corvinus. Unless Dumu literally walks away and idles for like two minutes, it's very difficult to claw this back. Like, he's so deep in on archers, and there's no easy transition. You see, he's now trying to go javelins. You're trying to go javelins when you're already 25 plus behind. Like, you're just going to get parked on your, your production lines at this point. Um, a tough one here for Corvinus. I mean, the Musafadi, I think... It was kind of a wild idea when there was nothing on show to counter. Had this been a Malian player that played a more open format with less walling and less focus on turtling, I get the Musafadi. But when Dumu was willing to concede the map the way he was, it's surprising to me that Corvinus went for more of an all-in aggro play when he could have just played for greed. 
Yeah, now this is rough for Corvinus. He's going to try to fight this out. This is an important game for him. He doesn't want Demu to move on to match point, but his composition is just very lackluster. If this wasn't a mirror matchup, then maybe there would be a slim chance, but in a mirror, it's just not going to work out. Demo himself is now coming in with Poison Arrows. Soon he is going to play Archers just like Corvinus does, and then he can just win by the numbers. He's also torching down the pit mine to the front. Things are falling apart here for Corvinus, and it looks like Demo is going to be the one moving on to a match point soon. Yeah, Mangos don't feel good in this position, right? Like, like it seems like that's the recovery point for Corvinus, but when you're playing Mangos like this, it's like, please just get out of my base, right? Usually Mangos feel good when you're able to dictate a fight and the flow of it, because it's such an awkward unit to handle. I don't see any flow control for Corvinus. Right now, he's at risk of getting drowned in the flow that is the Dumu army. Javelins as well, just split up. I I mean, it's Mango. I, it's on its own. It's not even getting the best of hits. Just everything's dying too fast here. I wouldn't be surprised if you see the GG the moment the Mangoes go down, because once this first one's breached, the second one has no protection. Yep, Corbin is still trying to keep this alive, but it seems like it's just too far gone. His army is getting shredded. And behind this, Demo is queuing up a bunch of Musafati warriors. When they arrive on the battlefield, those mangoes will have no defense. Oh man, he even actually got the stealth heal as well. I, I don't think you're really gonna like have an opportunity to use it here because it's just kind of full A click at this phase. But you know, if there's ever a reset point, you can pull away a bunch of injured boys and send them back in. But you know, mangoes, it's crazy to think this whole time I'm still not convinced they've like fully paid for themselves. Right? It's like they're killing two or three javelins with each shot, but what you're losing in return, the villages. For a start, any standing army is a follow-up. And a never-ending tide of, of Dumu's, it kind of just paints a gruesome picture. Yeah, Corvinus now reduced to just 11 army. He's out of food, he still has a lot of gold to work with, but his eco is now awfully unbalanced. Basically no wood income to speak of. He's still trying to get in some mangonels, trying to get some Musafati warriors going, but Dimu is now moving in with his own these guys even have the stealth on them, might actually get a good wrap on some of those mangonels. Uh, they, they, they are trying to get to the eco, but that wall makes it impossible, right? Yeah. So going to TC range. So I think Timu is just like, okay, he should have GG'd, he hasn't GG'd. So now instead, I'm just going to go after his economy. Like, I know you've been in this corner for a long time, you have to come out. So if you refuse to, I'll just snipe you where you're weak. Because these mangoes were great to hold, they at least looked like they were great, right? But we have to remember that they're immobile units. So they can't get in position to stop this from happening. Yeah, now they do get in here. Villagers have to flee for their lives. Demo already has a lead of 12 eco, has an army lead of 80. Soon this gap is going to get even bigger. Yeah, and it's just like, even if he loses all his Musafati, his military mass is so much larger, it doesn't matter. He's still stronger in a fight, right? So it's just, it's a tough pill to swallow for Corvinus, right? Um, He's also going to start running out of wood in safe areas at this rate. I think he's taken most of his safe wood. So now he has to play onto the battlefield. And the moment he moved the mangonels out of position, the flood fruit commences. And guess where the rest of Corvinus' economy is? Yeah, it's just, it's just pain and agony at this point. I don't blame Corvinus for trying to hold on to this game, but especially in a mirror matchup, it's just near impossible for him to turn this around. Dimu, pop capped at this point. Corvin is still just at 120 supply. Not much to do here, really, for him. I feel like I'm in a factory full of conveyor belts here, right? As you see one group go left, one group go right past each other, right? Never interfering. Everyone's got their own flow to things, but... I mean, at this point, the house is on fire, you're screaming, and everyone's running around. That's the best way to describe the state of Orange's base. And you know, I think this is the stage where it's fair to start thinking forward to the next games, right? We have region. Uh, what was the other potential one we could see? It's regions and... Yeah, regions was Corvinus' home map selection, and I think Basin was the choice for Basin. Demu. Correct. Fortress of the Huntress now coming in here for Demu. I mean, when oh, yeah. Demu is up to Imperial, Corvinus is very likely to tap out. His hopes yeah. of securing this game, his hopes of turning this around will be gone the moment that Imperial <laughs> Age hits. He even built it at home because I think Dumu's mind is like, okay, I'm just going to get the tech up and then he'll admit it, right? He'll admit it's over because there's... I, I, I'm, I'm not trying to be negative here, but like there is no real way to get back into this game because 
Corvinus is not addressing the key concern, which is the economy behind this. Whereas his economy is constantly being idled up. So tech up complete. Corvinus, like if, you're, if there's one play you can make here is you just run for the enemy base. But you're so far away that the tech up should theoretically come in before you arrive. Yeah, Demu's resource income also a lot better than what Corvinus has. Imperial Age in and now. Corvinus will try to take a fight, but you see, he's essentially abandoning his own base over here, so Demu oh. can just shred that eco, and this is exactly why the Fortress of the Huntress from Demu was built in the eco. He kind of anticipated the counter attack or lost Hail Mary here from Corvinus, and Corvinus won't be able to snipe any of those Kalo ranches with the Fortress of the Huntress being right next to them. Yeah, it's literally his only move left, right? Like, we called it. it, it he's right. He's making the right move, but as soon as you discover the stack point defense, you can't shut down the eco. Yeah, the reality for him is, like, what we talked about is that you know, you lose all your villages, but you still have economy, right? So if mine are just going to die, might as well let them die quicker instead of sooner and find a trade. But Dimu on the defensive is just too much at this stage. They're going to whittle each other down, and then you're talking about a full reset where your opponent has imp over you. You'd have to somehow force Dumu to stay in his base for two minutes, and you'd have to then get a tech up yourself. Yeah, it's a clean up. Corvin is down to 80 population. Just no way back into this game. We will be heading into game number four with Dimu having the match point here in the group stage. Small differences make the mile. We always say that, KP, for mirrors, especially for Mali and mirrors. In this one, Corvin has opted to go Castle Age a lot quicker than his opponent, but I think it comes down to the fact that the initial Musafati play was scouted by Dimu. Musafati scouted and Corvinus had to change up his entire game plan from this game. And that Musafati spam he wanted to pull off, it never really materialized. And that's the fundamental issue with the opening of Corvinus is that his opening is designed to deny scouting. Right? He had a great defensive hold with the triple gold vein and the, the forward spawning woods to defend from. But the issue in this game is that Corvinus, he dropped a stable, he upgraded his scouts. He failed to kill his opponent's scouts. He actually lost his scout first, right? So it went down to a 1-1. And then Dumu kept the other one alive long enough to sniff this Musafati play out. So I think Corvinus, when he's reviewing this game and wondering like, what, what could I have done better? That is the number one detail. Like the fact that you invested in a counter to scouts and failed to counter them is why the follow-up failed so hard. Yeah, Corvinus still in this game here, but now this keep is being bombarded down, access to gold is denied. I just don't know what Corvinus can do to turn this around, KP. I'm, you're trying to look at the positives, trying to look at the silver lining here as a second wave is going to hit the base of Demu, but you feel like the fate of this counterattack will be just the same as what you had for the first one. Yeah, it's like, I, I mean, Corvinus... If this doesn't demoralize him, go for it, right? Like, there's, there's, we always have to remember, like, comebacks are possible. Your opponent can slip up in a big way. Um, but this, this is a sequence of, of slip ups, right? You need a domino effect of, like, 20 to get back into this game. I love that he's still trying to raid and find those, those dents somewhere in the line. And it is slowing Dumu down. But I think if we start to see these gunners come out, that for me is going to be the stage where the Musafati died too fast. Yeah, and you look at the upgrades for Demu, he's just not grabbing the Imp Blacksmith upgrades. So the margin of these fights will be bigger and bigger now. Did did he get his hands on the precision tech? I'm I know that Demu researched it about a minute, minute and a half ago, but I don't know if Corvin has got precision training. Like it's a cast age tech, right? So he should have it. But if we check his blacksmiths, like if he's missing that, it's just a it's a big whoopsie. Because that was actually that was a bit of a whoopsie from Dimu. The fact that he was in Castles that long and then didn't get precision training was a little bit surprising to me. He only got it after he tech. Yeah, army numbers have been reduced to limited numbers here for Dimu. He's down to just 41. His resource I mean, income is still a lot better than Corvinus's though. 30 yeah. eco advantage, plus of course Imperial Age upgrades as well. Still a very long way for to go for Corvinus to make something happen here. Uh, he, he's out of food. I, I think it's happened, right? Like he's he's been cut up too much. The bleed out is now starting to get a bit overwhelming. Like 
the only unit he can afford is Moose Body. That is literally it. Look at the food difference in this game now. Elite Army Tactics, like, if that's not the point, you, I've said it a few times now, but, like, Corvinus just keeps shaking his head. But, like, that, thank you. Like, we, we, we're getting stages and stages into denial here. And Corvinus is finally willing to admit there is no way back in this game. Respect him for trying, though, but Demu now finds himself on match point. Essentially still two games ahead of us, but after what I just saw there, Corvinus has got his hands full.